Yesterday, we vented a lot of frustrations about the Minnesota Fighting Vikings missing out on more free agent offensive linemen, Austin Blind just going to the Chiefs, and then re-signing Dakota Dozier, who was flat out terrible last year. We thought, okay, is Rick Spielman getting in on April Fools a little bit early? Is that what's going on? Nah. But we always try to focus on what a player can do versus what they cannot do. And glass is half full. So we're going to try and do that today and talk about the positives of bringing back the former Furman Paladin. Besides him playing at an awesome school with an awesome mascot, right? Number one, his deal, although not formally announced, is probably for the league minimum with nothing guaranteed. And even though the Vikings will have 10 draft picks and a bunch of UDFAs coming in, uh, the Vikings currently only have 62 players on the 90-man roster, including Dozier. So they were going to fill it out with veterans at some point. So... Bringing back Dozier versus bringing in a guy, taking a flyer on a guy like Forrest Lamp or Trey Turner, hoping that they can stay healthy and recover some of that cachet that they had. Sure, would rather have done that versus a known suck of Dozier. But, oh, by the way, the Vikings can still do that. We're waiting. Come on. Number two, Dozier is better than Samia. Like, if you're going to choose a backup guard and... If Dozier does make the roster, by golly, he better be a backup. But if you had the choice of having the 10th worst guard in the NFL last year per PFF or the third worst, who would you rather have? It is relatively close. Number three, hopefully, like we said, this signing is for depth only. Like Dozier should not be handed his starting job like he was last year. I mean, oh, that faux sham competition between him and Aviante Collins. Okay, Dennison cannot Dennison this. I don't care that he played for you with the Jets, Rick. So, hey, you need to change things up up front or you're going to be fired. Uh, like You're not going to be the only Rick who's going to be fired, by the way. Because the lack of urgency on offensive line, maybe it's a sign that the Vikings are bullish on Ezra Cleveland moving back to his natural position of left tackle. And they're in on 2027th round pick Kyle Hinton, as well as former 6th round pick Ole Udo, potentially competing in, in the middle, which would make a, a lot of sense. Both those two guard spots flanking Garrett Bradbury, I would be okay. Well, bring him more depth in the draft, but no. Uh, and also, I know it is frustrating. Missing out on the big name free agent offensive lineman over and out and over and over again. But remember, it takes two to tango in free agency. They have to want to come here and the money has to be right. Now, you can't do anything about the former. I mean, it's not like the weather's going to get any better or the state taxes are going to improve. But the latter, we can be mad about because the Vikings do have the cap space to go hunting, right? Uh, Jumpin' Joe Thune, Kyle Long, Awesome Blythe all chose the Chiefs. Kevin Zeitler chose the Ravens, even though the Vikings had interest in him going way back. Ethan Postage decided to stay with the Seahawks on a $3 million deal deal that's what's frustrating and maybe the ravens are asking way too much for orlando brown like maybe that would be cost prohibitive in terms of giving up draft capital okay uh, but either way the vikings let go of riley reef who's one of their best most competent offensive linemen last year and he signed with cincinnati for relatively cheap money 7.5 million that brought back rashad hill that brought back dakota dozier both of them would be better off as backups only and then they traded for mason cole whose best role his ceiling is probably that utility swing offensive lineman a la brad jones so now the Vikings are in a spot where they need to draft offensive linemen. They need to hammer it early and often in the draft. I think probably two or three of the first seven picks in the top four rounds need to be spent on offensive line. And it is what it is at this point. So again, there are positives. I'm bringing back Dozier. He does take up a spot on the 90 man. As long as he's not guaranteed money and not guaranteed a spot, no favors. You have to earn your place on the roster. And maybe he'd improve. Uh, that that's a new factor in the CBA. Uh, new provision is like, oh, players can improve. Am I betting on it? Am I holding my breath? Probably not. Uh, but if Dozier somehow wins a starting job again and hasn't significantly improved, which I, I doubt, given Rick Dennison, I mean that's a failure. That that's that means the Vikings have problems. That means they haven't signed or drafted uh, talent enough to beat out Dakota Dozier. And Dennison is probably doing Dennison things again. So. All that good work of the offseason, improving that defense, getting things back together. If the offensive line isn't right, the Vikings will still be sucking hind teeth. Uh, they'll still be uh, pretenders as opposed to contenders. So we'll see. We still have more free agency. The Vikings still have cap space, and the draft is still coming up. So I don't know. I don't know. Sign for a slamp, draft AVT, and then things suddenly just get a little bit better. So. We'll see what happens. Uh, be your thoughts. Positives. Resigning Dakota Dozier. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more, that work. Pull some of the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.